Okay, it's time we start our website enumeration. And the very first thing that we should do is to take a look at the website through our browser. So we want to see what pages it has. What does it open when we visit its IP address? This is very basic stuff that we want to check first. So to do that, we can go to our Firefox and make sure that you have your OWASP BWA machine started. And once you have it started, then we can visit the IP address of OWASP BWA. In my case, that is 192.168.1.4. We already showed how we can check out the IP address of this virtual machine. So once you do that, type in the IP address in your Firefox and it should visit this page. So this is the first thing that we take a look at. We already noticed that we have a bunch of links right here. So this page has a bunch of other pages that could be hosting different services, that could be offering different things, and that could potentially have multiple login forms or something similar. So for example, let's pick any one of these. Let's go to this one under the realistic, intentionally vulnerable applications. If we click on it, and let me just enlarge this a little bit so you can see everything better. Well, we visit some type of an application, some type of a page that our OWASP BWA has. And the first thing that catches my eye is something like this. We have a search button. And we also have a login button. What does this mean? Well, it means that this could potentially lead us to some type of a brute force attack where we will try to gain access to a certain account on this page. Perhaps they have weak passwords and we can log in if we brute force the account you never really know. We can also create an account. So this page is already looking interesting to us. We also have some type of a file that we can send. Currently no file is selected, but we can see right here that we have some input as well, and then we have a button to send files. All of these things we would want to play around and see what we can do with them. Let's take a look at another page as well. So if we go back, and let's, for example, go to this one. Hmm. We straight away get a login form. So this also tells us that there could be a potential brute force attack or weak credentials attack here as well, since it does offer us a username and password field. Let's go back, since we don't really know any username and password here. We don't really know what this is. It could be some administrator page. It basically could be anything whatsoever. We can also do something like this, for example, go back and let's say we want to try to find some secret administrator page. We can try something like slash admin. And in this case, we don't really get anything. It says slash admin is not found, but it was worth to try it out. Now, let's check this out on a real website since this is specifically made vulnerable. So we already know that we will find vulnerabilities in OWASP. But let's go and, for example, search for tesla.com. So this is an official website, it is registered. And if we visit it, so we get some prompt right here that asks us to select our region. Let's just click X right here. And what we would usually be looking for is, once again, we would try to find some type of a login form or some type of a search field, or any part of web application where we can interact with. So we already see right here something like a Tesla account. And it does ask us to log in. So we do have some type of a login form. Now, login forms are not the only thing that we are looking for, but for now on, it's the first thing that catches our eye. Now, for real websites, we can also perform some advanced search using Google. This is also called Google Dorking. It's using Google advanced search techniques to discover information that we might find useful. For example, let's go to Google and let's go with Tesla first. So let's type in site and then two dots, tesla.com. And let's say we want to find all the PDF files from this website right here. We would type site tesla.com and then file type two dots pdf if i press enter it will give us all the results of pdf files that this page has 
And we can see that these indeed are PDF files. It says right here, as we can see. And perhaps we could find something useful in these PDF files. You never know. Maybe there is some PDF file that has information disclosure and perhaps it gives us some information that we find useful. We can also try to find some emails from this website. How do we do that? Well, we can do something like this. We could open double quotes at tesla.com and then we could dash site and then two dots tesla.com. Press enter. And let's see. Right now we do not manage to find something interesting for Tesla. And here is one email we did manage to find, but that's just one email. It still could be useful for us, but we're looking for a little bit more. So we can instead try to go with some university websites since they usually have a bunch of emails. Let's go with this one. I'm going to use a university from my country and it's located at this website. And we're going to use the same command. So at and then the addition to the email and then the site, which is the same link or same domain. I will press enter right now. And here is one email address that could also be useful. Now we can also visit these links and try to find even more, but let's just see what we can gather from here. Here's another email address. And here appears to be a start of a phone number. So we also get that. Here's another email address right here. And that would pretty much be it from the first page. Now we can, as I said, visit these links and then we can find even more email addresses, hopefully. And here's another one that we missed from the first link. Okay. Now we tried to go to slash admin before on our OWASP VM by adding slash admin in front of the link or in front of the IP address. But for regular websites, there is something even better that we can try using Google. We can use Google dorks to try and find something like admin pages, but we can do that by searching admin keyword inside the title of the page or inside the URL. To do that, we simply type in title two dots admin or in URL two dots as well admin and then we specify which site and let's use this same website this university website so this is the command and let's press enter then we get some responses right here if you go to any one of them hmm, secure connection failed and the error that it gives us is ssl error unsupported version this website might not support the TLS 1.2 protocol, which is the minimum version supported by Firefox. Enabling TLS 1 and TLS 1.1 might allow this connection to succeed. So let's give it a try if we enable it. And we do manage to succeed. And you can see that this link has addition to it that has admin keyword and that is why we managed to find it. We also have a couple of input fields right here. So here we enter email address and password. And here we also enter our email address. And this is just one of the pages. Maybe there are multiple pages that have admin keyword inside of it, and that could be useful for us. So for now, this seems to be some type of an admin form. And we do also get some email address right here. I do believe this is an email address. There's not much info about it, but nonetheless, we did get here successfully. These are usually the things that you would do first to start off with website enumeration. We just gather some information about it. We perhaps try to find some additional pages, such as this admin page. Now, the most important thing is that we must start somewhere. There is not a strict rule that says how you can perform your website penetration testing and in which order you do all of these things. That's why we're going to check out most common techniques and it will be up to you to apply them as you like. As far as this lecture, which was on Google dorking and just inspecting website in general, you can take a look at some additional advanced Google commands that are useful for us hackers. So we can find them by, let's say, typing Google dorks and let's go with the first link, which is exploit-db.com. 
let's visit that. And once it opens this page, we will get a saying here that this is Google Hacking Database. And down here we have a bunch of Google dorks or Google commands that we can use to extract some useful information from a certain website. For example, it gives us the command right here. Under the category it says, what does it search for? So in this case, it searches for files containing passwords and the author name right here. And you have a bunch of these commands, as we can see, these are only first 15 commands out of 6,000. So you can take a look at here, perhaps find some useful commands that you might apply to your penetration tests and you might use them later on. However, you will always have this database right here at this link, so you can visit it anytime that you like. Okay, awesome. So we took a look at Google dorking or executing some advanced Google search commands. We also took a look at our website. We browsed a few pages here and there just to see what the website has. Now, in the next video, we're going to check out how we can use multiple ways to discover some more information about our websites, such as IP addresses, such as domain names, such as its physical address, perhaps some additional emails or phone numbers and all of that. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.